So, we've been talking about the London Spitfire a lot recently. It's time to get off of the London Spitfire. They have finished their work. They have a seven-man roster, and we are not going to be talking about them again until we come to some power rankings and stuff like that, which actually, I ain't going to do a power rankings very, very soon because we need to talk about some of this because it's changed. Anyway, we are going to take a look at the rest of the transfers that have been going on recently, and there have been some interesting ones. I think that's safe to say. So... First of all, we are starting off with the Vancouver Titans, who have signed the South Korean DPS player Teru from O2 Blast. Now, this is a rather interesting signing, and it caught me off guard. Now, Teru is a projectile player, known for his Doomfist, Echo, Farah, and Genji. Uh, he had a decent time at O2 Blast. He's actually rather young as well. So, this is a good pickup. O2 Blast, again, one of the stable teams in Korea generally. Uh, throughout the throughout season one of Korean Contenders, they were near the top, if not top, and they won Korean Contenders. Uh, this season one of Korean Contenders, anyway. They did, however, fall a little bit flat in season two, getting swept by Runaway. But you know, that's up and downs in Korea. And to be quite honest, like Korea is a little bit of a weird one at the moment, where there's a, almost a changing of guard going on. So there can be uh, some erroneous results should we say however getting when they got knocked out of contenders they did go and take uh take part in the china and korea battle invitational where they won that tournament against uh against the one winner from china so o2 blast are still a very stable good team in korea and it is really great to see uh teru coming up to the vancouver titans it's rather a surprise because you know teru is korean and well the last time the vancouver titans had some korean players well didn't go all that well, did it, let's be honest. I think it should be okay this time, however. Uh, we will see how Terror exactly fits into the Vancouver Titans nearer the season, but I'm not going to lie, the DPS line of the Vancouver Titans is not that bad. It's just kind of the rest of it that lets it down, doesn't it, really? Anyway, we'll move on. Time to go over to the Soul Dynasty. Now, this has been something that has been bugging me for a little while. It's the Soul Dynasty's lack of off-tank, or proper off-tank, shall we say. Now, at the end of last season, they signed two you on a two-way contract from Gen G, and he actually did rather well. Um, they, previous to that, had been using Marvel on off-tank a lot. Now, Marvel is obviously a main tank, usually, and can fill some roles, and obviously Jester can play a Sigma as well. So there are those opportunities for Soul Dynasty, but what they have done is they've moved to you from a two-way to a full contract with the Soul Dynasty, and I think this is actually a really good pickup. This gives them a, a, a proper off-tank that can play proper off-tank roles when we're looking at the likes of D.Va and things like a Roadhog, but not necessarily because Roadhog is generally Jester's forte. I don't think I don't think we're going to see 2U play the off-tank completely and no one else will ever play off-tank. I think there's going to be a lot of swapping around when it comes to the Soul Dynasty tank line, but 2U gives them a stable off-tank option when they need someone who needs to play a Zarya or needs to play a D.Va, then they've got someone who is a really stable off-tank to do that with. If they want to play a Sigma, then they obviously can bring in Marvel. If they want to bring in Roadhog, then they can switch Road they can switch Gesture over to the Roadhog and then play Marvel on the main tank. They've got those options, but to you offers more diversity and more depth to the tank line of the Soul Dynasty. Something that I think was needed, needed greatly by the Soul Dynasty, I'm not gonna lie. So I think this is actually a pretty major pickup for Sol, and it rounds out that team really nicely. I'm not expecting any more moves over in that part of Korea. And I think, yeah, I think that's actually a really nice signing. Next, we move over to the Uprising, though. The Boston Uprising, they've been rather quiet recently, but they have signed up a new coach. So this is assistant coach uh, Baroy, who will be coming in. He's a German coach. He was with the Toronto Defiant. He then left the Toronto Defiant uh, late last year, and it's now coming into the Boston Uprising. It's not, let's be honest, it's not a massive, massive coaching addition to the Boston Uprising. Uh, I think we can all agree with that. Roy didn't have a massive, massive time, a massive pop-off with the Toronto Defiant. But in addition to the already present Laurie as head coach, and as Ascoft as as, uh, as assistant coach as well, it does make the, of the Uprising a very diverse team in terms of nationality. When you look at their roster, you've got Color Hex Fusions, Myung Bong Punk, I'm 37, Stand 1, and Soon. So you've got things from, like, you've not only got uh, Korea, but you've got Britain, you've got France, 
And then you've also got influence from Australia and New Zealand. So there's a lot of diversity there. But now when you look at the coaching staff as well, you've got Mineral, who is Swedish and a manager. You've got Laurie, who's obviously South Korean. Then you've got Ascroft, who's who's French. And then you've got Baroy, who's German. So you've got it's it's all over the place. It's not it's not all Korean. It's not all European. It's not it's not all NA. In fact, actually, there's no NA influence apart from the owner of Uprising. So yeah, it's it's kind of weird. It's not it's kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, but we will see how it works for the Boston Uprising. I'm not sure if it will. If I'm perfectly honest, but again, we always tend to have doubts over the Uprising. We never tend to trust them to be this great team. So we will see what happens, but we're going to round out this one with the biggest signing of the year. Uh, or should we say the biggest move of the year? Now, we weren't expecting this. We thought the San Francisco Shock were done, and it appears not. So the San Francisco Shock have announced Anne's leaving. He is now retired from Overwatch. So this is interesting, isn't it? Anne's came in out of retirement. Uh, he came and went in for went in for a while with Gone Water, and then very quickly uh, moved over to the San Francisco Shock, where he had a fantastic performance for that team throughout 2020. Countless trophies in uh, the melee, May Melee in Countdown Cup and the playoffs, getting first placed in all of them and getting a high placing in the Summer Showdown as well, losing to the Paris Eternal, and. Then, in obviously the Grand Finals, he wins the Grand Finals with the San Francisco Shock getting their second title, getting his first title. And when you win the Overwatch League, there isn't really much more you can win in Overwatch. And I think, and I thought this from the very beginning when they signed arms, he came back to prove himself. And I think he d he's done that. He's really, really done that. He was, back in the day, when he was streaming or when he was on Blossom, he was known as this widow one trick streamer, he's no good, he's never going to make it, blah blah blah. Well now, he's won the Overwatch League, no one's ever going to say he couldn't make it. He's fulfilled his dream, and there is no other place for him now. Uh, he's, I mean, when you look at the World Cup or something like that, is he really going to displace someone like Carpe? It's unlikely. So, Arns has kind of completed his journey, and now he's retiring. There were some issues with him, apparently, in terms of him not liking Overwatch for half a year, and you know, Krusty saw him through it, stuff like that. I think that's to be expected with a player that retires and comes back, if I'm honest. Very often, retirements, people coming out of retirement very often end up going back into it quite quickly. Um, so there are, there are a lot of examples around that, around the contender scene. This is not too much of a surprise. What does this mean for the San Francisco Shock? Well, although it's a loss, and this might be a hot take. So, although it can be argued that Arms is a great loss for the San Francisco Shock, it is not uh, should we say team crippling and I don't believe it's going to stop people from putting San Francisco Shock as their favorites to do a three-peat and win 2021 season. The reason I say this is because it now makes sense why the Shock signed Glister, whereas it didn't before. A lot of people were saying, well you signed Glister, why have you signed Glister when you've got Anz? Because Anz is at the moment better than Glister, people would say. And I thought of it back then as more of a Anz is a short term thing, Glist is going to be developed under Anz, and then Glist is going to become the number one hit scan for Shock. Actually, that process has now been expediated quite quite heavily because now Glist is going to be the number one long range hit scan for the Shock. And I think that is a massive platform for Glister to show his worth. I think Glister was fantastic at London last season. He looked great on a roster that was poor and that performed poorly. Very often it was either, it was Glister that was was standing out and causing problems for teams. And given the platform that the San Francisco Shock can offer him, San Francisco Shock have money, extremely good coaching. He's moving over with Agape, who was the head coach at London last season, is now assistant coach at San Francisco Shock. And of course, the elephant in the room is Krusty. And Krusty gets results out of players. By far. Best coach in the league. And I don't think anyone can ever doubt that. I believe Glister might actually be one of the standout players for the Shock coming going into the season. I think he could be a very, very good player uh, given the coaching that the Shock can offer him and the players that the Shock can put around him. When you look at the starting lineup for the Shock, it is, it is difficult to call. 
but you'd have to say it would most likely be Violet and FD God, uh, with Smurf and Choi Hyobin, with Super coming in if it's a Reinhardt meta or a Roadhog meta. And then when you look at their DPS, they've got the options of Tayo, Striker, Nero, and Glister. Well, their long range hit scan is certainly going to be Glister. Their short range tracer player is going to be Striker. Their, their more Genji type player is going to be Tayo. But I think more likely the projectile will be Nero. So a lot of the time you might see Glister Nero, or you might see Nero Striker. It depends who's going to be the Echo player for this lot, to be quite honest. I would be interested. I, I would assume it would be Nero. So on current meta, which is live, you would see Nero, uh, Nero Striker. That is That would be my prediction there. But we, uh, we will remain to see how the DPS meta goes, because I'm not expecting the DPS meta to change too much with the experimental card changes. It's more likely the tank meta that will change. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as the current meta goes, Glister has a great tracer, but does he have a tracer? Does he have a tracer better than a striker? No, I wouldn't say so. Glister is just going to be more dominant on that that more Ash uh, Widow pick, maybe a McCree as well over striker. So I think it is okay for Shot. I don't think this is Panic Station saying, "Oh my God, we've lost our great hit scan. What are we going to do?" No, Krusty's thought about this. The team has thought about this, and they've joined Glister. And this is exactly why they signed Glister back at the start of December because they knew Anz was having issues, and they knew Anz might well retire. And Glister is the perfect fit for that. So, I think the shock are A-OK. -okay. But, I will be leaving it here for this one, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you'd like to give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then!